morning guys well after the excitement of yesterday finally getting that LPG adapter I think today hopefully is going to be a little bit less stressful blue skies the sun is shining after a couple of days of rain so hopefully today is going to be a much better day so what better than to drive down to the beach and enjoy the sunshine I think we found a nice little parking spot which isn't far from the beach where we can leave the van and then enjoy the sunshine and the sand. So this is where we're parked up for a few days, right on the coast, west coast of Portugal, right adjacent to a lovely stretch of beach. There's a big river here. We're on sort of like a spit, if you like, a long piece of land between the river and the sea. There's nothing down here, it's so remote, beautiful location. And this is the service area where we are. This one's really good in terms of facilities. There are hot showers here, barbecue areas there's areas where you can do all your dishes and that so you really don't need any facilities to stay here it's very well provided for electric hookups you know running water and there's also a swimming pool a play area and a mini golf as well so it's seven euros fifty a night which is absolutely fantastic we've actually stayed here for a few nights because it's been so good let me give you a quick tour around the camp. There's the reception building where you would pull up and pay initially. Just over those sand dunes in the distance, that's where the beach and the sea is. Here is like a little sort of children's play area and picnic area. Just in the background there, you can see the water slides. They've got two swimming pools here, a deeper sort of adults pool, and then there's quite a large kids pool as well. And then in these white buildings here, these are the changing rooms. And this is where you've got toilets, wash hand basins, there's changing facilities and running hot and cold water in the showers, which if you're staying on this particular site, that is all free and included within the price. The place is really clean, it's well kept and looked after. I mean, it's really early in the season, so there's hardly anybody here. I imagine this place gets quite busy in the height of summer. But even now the sun's really warm we've had an absolutely fantastic stay here you notice on the service board it had a little symbol for bungalows but I imagine these are these little holiday chalets they're a bit like the beach homes that you see on the coast at home they're like a little shed and inside there I should imagine there's sleeping and maybe even a little kitchen area and that but I would expect that you can hire these out so you could just turn up in a vehicle if you didn't have anywhere to stay and you could rent one of these little beach homes there's a little lay-by area that you pull your van into to service it. So there's toilet cleaning facilities there. There is a small charge if you just want to use the facilities, but if you're staying here, it's all included. And then you've got a grey water drain and fresh water top up there as well. So as you can see, there's the Sprinter. There's where we're parked in front of all the little beach huts. And then just over the sand dunes, there's a really nice walk along the promenade, sort of like a boardwalk just a wooden walkway goes for miles along the beach there and then just up on that little hill there that's a little beach bar it's called the Luna Bar and we've had a few happy afternoons spent there sipping the local lagers and enjoying the sunshine watching the sea 
It does get quite busy on the weekend, on a Saturday and Sunday. It's very popular with the locals, but it's such a chilled out, really happy vibe there. You know, it's been absolutely amazing. I can't recommend it enough. We've had a great time here. On today's list of tasks what I want to do is get up on the roof and have a look at the solar panels. We've been on the road for a couple of weeks now, we've been on some sort of dodgy roads, a bit bumpy. I want to check all of them tie down bolts, just make sure that they're still nice and secure up there. And we've also had some torrential rain over the last couple of days, so I just want to make sure that they're clean. They could have deposited a lot of sand and that on top of those panels and if they're dirty you can lose up to 30% of your solar power and as we're getting some really nice sunshine at the moment I want to make the most of that. So I'm going to get the fold up ladders that I've got in the garage out, get up on the roof, give the panels a good clean and check that they're nice and secure. There we go guys, that's the 360 watt panels, all nice and clean and gleaming in the sunshine. Let's have a quick look on the controller downstairs and see how much we're getting. So there we go guys, it's just about quarter past ten in the morning. The sun is still fairly low on the horizon, it's on the rise. And we've got sort of just over 50 volts and four and a half amps. So that's about 225 watts or approaching between 225 and 250 watts. We've got coming in already at sort of just after 10 in the morning. I do expect that to increase. I mean, yesterday, even with the panels were dirty, I was getting over 300 watts in the middle of the day. And already you can see our battery condition, 13.9 volts and totally full. So I'm going to take advantage of all this power today, do a little bit of video editing this morning, get some work out of the way, really so we've got another video to upload. In the morning for a couple of hours after breakfast, what I like to do is set myself up with my wireless keyboard and mouse. I've got my computer plugged into the TV screen and I just like to answer all your comments and questions. because. The YouTube channel wouldn't be anything without you guys supporting it. So it's important for me to answer your questions and build up that little bit of a community. You know, I've subscribed to quite a few other channels myself and it is disappointing when you take the time to comment or ask a question and you never get a reply. So as much as possible, I do like to make sure that I answer all your questions. So if you have got any, please do write them in the comments section below and I'll try and come back to you as soon as I can. So we've been parked up by the beach for a couple of days and it's kind of developed a little bit of a problem with the fantastic fans. Well not a problem so much, it's just very wet, moist, and there's a lot of sand in the air here and I think it's affected the rain sensors because the same thing's happening on both fans. So today we're going to have to do a bit of maintenance, get up on the roof and I reckon we're just going to have to clean those rain sensors. Because I've got the fan open manually at the moment, the vent, and if I turn the power on, you'll see what happens.
the rain sensor's kicked in, it's decided that it must be wet outside. So it's automatically shutting the vent and turning the power off. And whatever you do with the power on, you can't get it to manually reopen because it always thinks that the rain sensor's wet. So what we're going to have to do is get up on the roof and just give that a bit of a wipe over and clean. And then that should cure the problem. So guys, we're up on the roof here. These are the fantastic fans and that's that rain sensor that I was talking about. And as you can see, there's two sets of interlocking sort of terminals there it's just like a foil strip really and at the moment obviously there's a break in the connection between those two wires but if you get a little bit of rain drops onto that sensor then it makes a connection between those two wires and that's what initiates the roof fan to shut and i guess because we're quite close to the beach here it was very foggy and misty overnight you know you get a bit of sand kicked up and there was a little bit of dirt on top of those contacts and it may have been just enough to make a contact between them which is why both fans were shut so i'm just going to clean that off with a dry rag and then we'll test it make sure it's okay all right lou just turn it on extract for me Yeah, so normally what would happen with the power on if that rain sensor was made if there was a bit of water on there this would now initiate the close down and turn the fan off so obviously that was a bit of dirt because now the fans running the lids staying open so that does seem to have cured that while I'm up here I'll just take the opportunity to clean these lids because these obviously get a little bit of dirt on them as well Right, turn the fan off, babe. Turn the power off. Thanks. Good thing about having the garage in the back of the van is we can bring the bikes with us. We can leave the van here on the camp site and then head off on the bikes into town. on the menu for tonight then Lou. The way this onion's going? <laughs> My fingers. <laughs> right, we have ratatouille tonight. You can always get some nice produce locally. We nipped out on the bikes this morning. Got a nice onion, pepper, courgette. So tonight, vegetarian, no meat in tonight's dinner. We're just gonna have a big plate of ratatouille. Who's chopping all the veg, prepping for it. And we're just taking his time to watch Dave, Louie, Joe and the gadgets. Right, well, disaster. I've had to take over the cooking. Lou's decided to add part of her thumb to the dinner tonight. So yours truly has got to finish off. I've just chopped a few courgettes. 
we've got some Italian herbs, pepper and salt and I'm just sweating down the onions, pepper and Lou's thumbnail. <laughs> Delicious. Well, the good thing about having an inverter in my van is I can run the normal barbershop clippers out of a normal socket. <laughs> I'm not getting oh you miss loads now. Oh. It's just missed loads. That's not going. Well, you can do with the other bits, can't you? Yeah. So we've taken full advantage of that lovely little place there and stayed for a couple of extra days. I mean, the owner was actually really nice and let us stay another night for free. So we only ended up paying for a couple of nights and then stayed an extra night for nothing, which was fantastic. I'll put all the details in the description of this video of where that resort is. So if you'd like to stay there as well, you can. So we're on our way down to Nazaire. Now that place is world famous for having the tallest wave ever surfed by somebody. I think the record was about 80 metres tall, which is absolutely mind-boggling. I mean, that's enormous. That's more like a tsunami, not a wave. Apparently there's like a massive trench in the seabed and all the water coming to Nazaire goes, gets pushed up out of this trench and forms these huge waves. Now, I'm no surfer, so I won't be taking a dip in the sea there. But I just thought it'd be interesting to go down there and just see if there are any massive waves down there. So it's en route to the south of Portugal. So we thought, well, why not check it out? Just on the drive down the coastal road to Nazaire, there's loads of these little car parks right by the sea. We just pulled up here to have a little spot of lunch. Managed to park up right by the coast and watch the waves. And have a nice little ham and tomato sandwich. Lovely. really do hope that you've enjoyed the videos that we've released so far on our European trip. Please do make sure that you are subscribed because you won't want to miss the next videos. We're really getting into the swing of this van life now and we've seen some absolutely beautiful places and wouldn't want you to miss them. Thanks very much for all the support and thanks for watching. Cheers!